I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and today I'm speaking with Ben Proudfoot, the director of the Oscar-nominated short film, The Queen of Basketball, about the life of Lucy Harris. Uh, first question I wanted to ask uh, is, how did you decide how to frame uh, Lucy's story like you did uh, for this short film? Mm, well, it's great to be here, Charlie, and thanks for, for having me. Um, yeah, I to be honest, it was pretty clear from the beginning that Lucy knew how to tell her story pretty well and was an incredibly charming storyteller with a perfect memory of what happened down to the nth degree and detail. So it was pretty clear from the get go that it was just all about giving Lucy the mic and letting her tell the story and then doing my best to support and not distract from the, the tale she was telling. One thing I was also curious about is, um, what, uh, what's interesting is how you uh, 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 open the documentary with her speaking in the third person. Yes. And then we hear you off screen, was that you off screen going, hey, yeah. who was that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but what made you, how did you, what made you decide to open the film that way? Well, it was, it was a unique moment. Lucy said something like, um, I think she was talking about how people would cheer Lucy, Lucy from the stands. And we were talking about that. And she said, yeah, people, people don't remember Lucy something like that. And it sort of like ticked into this second, you know, third person uh, way of talking about it. And I said, well, so who is Lucy, you know? And then she started talking about herself in that third person thing. And I just thought it was an incredibly, um, I thought, I just thought it was an incredibly intriguing way to open the movie because you just assume this is maybe her, her sister or her friend or a basketball expert or something like that talking about this renowned person and then you find out she's right here and she's going to tell you the whole thing herself. Um, and I think it sort of, it flicks at what the movie is about, which is the gap between this, the significance of this historical figure and how well known and how present she is in American public life. I can tell you that is uh, exactly what I thought uh, that it must be uh, someone, but because uh, I was saying to myself, she was alive when this was made, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, so uh, another thing I'm, uh, that I was wondering is how did you first hear about Lucy Harris? I first heard about Lucy from a colleague of mine, Haley Watson. And I had been interested in, and I'm sort of eternally interested in stories where if history had gone slightly differently, we may well know this person as a household name, but we don't. And Haley whispered in my ear, Google Lucy Harris. And I did. And I saw this laundry list of accomplishments, you know, first and only woman officially drafted into the NBA, first woman to score a basket in the Olympics, led her tiny little team to three national championships in the 70s, first woman inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. And I just noticed this huge sort of continental shelf of information from the late seventies onward. Couldn't find much about her at all. A lot of, a lot of the time her name was misspelled. Um, there was, there were very few photos of her. There were, I couldn't find any uh, video or film of her playing. And I just thought it was odd. I thought it was odd. I thought it was strange that there was such a, that she was so preeminent and yet there was so little information about her. And then I, I was, it was even more strange because it was relatively easy to get a hold of her. You know, I started looking into it and I, I kind of talked to her on the phone the next day and I told her who I was and she said, yeah, come on over. I said, is there any days that you're not free? And she said, I'm retired now, you can come anytime. And it was just very casual and it was, it was uncanny because of her, her dominance as an athlete. Um, I couldn't believe that she was so accessible and, and that no one, there wasn't, you know, 10 documentaries about her. Um, to what you were saying earlier, 
um, that it was tough to find footage of her playing. Um, you know, you, you, in the documentary, you have all the footage of these games. Was it hard to find that footage of these championship games? So this is one of those miraculous filmmaking moments that doesn't happen very often, but it did on this project. So we had very little. She had kept a scrapbook. We had almost no footage of her playing. There was like a sort of poor quality YouTube video. And I went to the Delta State archives to pick up this single 16 millimeter reel of film, which was apparently a wide shot of, of one of the games. And as I was signing the form to take it out, I said to the archivist, you're sure this is all there is? There's no other, I mean, it doesn't make any sense, right? She's like the star. And she said, oh, there's more. And I looked up at her and she said, oh yeah, there's a lot more. And I said, where, where is it? She, oh, upstairs. So we trekked upstairs and she opened the door of this room called the vault and turned on the lights. And it was like, dun, 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 you know, all these shelves, Indiana Jones warehouse. And, and I looked at Brandon, the cinematographer and we we're like, oh my gosh. So we wind our way to the back corner and there's all these bankers boxes. And she said, it's all here. And this was unsearchable, uncatalogued, undigitized. There was no way to know this was here unless you were the archivist or the archivist told you about it. And in, in that back corner was 15,000 feet of 16 millimeter film, dozens of umatic tapes, tens of thousands of pristine negatives, every single newspaper clipping imaginable. And it was just this treasure um, that lay in waiting for almost 50 years that perfectly illustrated and flickered to life everything Lucy had told us the week prior. So, um, you know, when I, I always find fascinating with uh, documentaries, whether they're feature or short subject, that um, uh, there are always that there are a lot of times there are stories that you're not able to include in there, but they're very fascinating, but for whatever reason, uh, you're not able to include it. Uh, were there any uh, stories that you really uh, liked from uh, Lucy that for one reason or another wasn't able to make it to the final cut? Uh, there's a lot. Um, actually today in 1977, Lucy played at Madison Square Garden in New York and scored 47 points. One of the first women's teams to play at the garden. Um, she told me a story about how her and her sister used to go to Chicago in the summers and they would walk onto the public basketball courts and uh, bet men in basketball games and they didn't know what they were getting into and they would win all kinds of money. She said that was the only time she ever made money off basketball. Um, there are a few stories like that that were just like remarkable, interesting stories that that were hard to fit, but she had an amazing life. I mean, endless, endless anecdotes. You know, it's interesting you uh, you bring that up because um, uh, in the documentary, she, uh, it, it seems like it, it comes across that, you know, if she could have played professionally, she would have. Um, uh, but uh, of course that didn't happen. She ended up becoming a teacher and a coach. Um, did, do you think uh, she found fulfillment in that work after she had finished her time as a college player? I think she did. Um, everybody that I know that she coached loved her as a coach. And same with those who had her as a teacher. I've met a lot of people who came up to me and said, you know, Miss Harris was my teacher, Miss Harris was my coach. You know, everybody who interacted with her, whether it was as coach, as teacher, as mother, as friend, as, you know, uh, fellow member of the church loved Lucy. Um, and I think she had a very beautiful and fulfilling life. And that's one of the things that's I think most pleasing about the, the film in terms of hearing from her is that I think she really was satisfied uh, with her family life and what she accomplished whether it was fair that she didn't get the opportunity to fully exploit her immense and you know, divine level of talent is a separate issue. In terms of was Lucy Harris fulfilled as a person? I think very much so. Um, you know, basketball was about the joy of playing it and she got to do that. 
And I don't think um, it was never about awards or, you know, being better than somebody else. She just loved the game. And it's, it, I mean, you definitely see that when she's talking about her children, uh, her, gro her grown children, because she, I, and I found it interesting that she listed their occupations first and then said, oh, and they were all athletes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was very important to her that all of her kids were athletes as well. And I remember she said, it's not in the film, but I remember she said in the interview how she, she told her kids like, you play like you, you don't have to play like me. You don't have to be your mom, you play like you. Just, just obviously a great mother, you know, a great parent. And, and I don't know, that's kind of like a dig. I, can, I kind of like, <laughs> when I first heard that, I was like, your mom's the best, so you're not gonna play like that. <laughs> well, she was. You know, it's like imagine being the child of the the one of the best, most dominant athletes in history. I mean, it's it's tough, right? Um, so I know she would never say anything mean spirited like that. I think she was just letting them off the hook to be themselves. So, um, uh, turning to uh, you, uh, this film. Uh, congratulations on this film receiving an, an Oscar nomination for documentary short. Uh, you were nominated last year. Uh, for a concerto as a conversation along with Chris Bowers. Um, what was it like finding out you had received another Oscar nomination? And I'm also curious as to what did you feel was the biggest difference between this time and uh, finding out about your, nom your first nomination last year? That's a good question. Um, I mean, it was, it's, it is, it is a, a magical and humbling experience, right? It's early, ungodly early in the morning. Um, you've been working hard to, you know, try to tell the story and get it out there. You know, in this case, it was an extremely emotional lead up because uh, Lucy had passed away in the month prior. You know, I think it was like, it was a Tuesday and the Saturday before, like two days before was Lucy's funeral. So I had just come back from Mississippi and this is a beautiful experience. It's not unlike Concerto in that there's someone who's in the film that you're really, you know, Horace in, in Concerto and Lucy in this film, where it's about them. You know, it's about them getting their moment and their flowers and their appreciation. And so last year it was just thrilling because I didn't even think that was on the horizon in my life. Um, and just such a beautiful thing to share with my friend. But this year, it was both a huge relief to know that we had brought the film to this level of recognition that way more people would see the film and learn Lucy's story. But also it was heartbreaking because, you know, you I just had pictured and hoped for Lucy to be on the red carpet. And there was something really, um, yeah, just poignant and left a lump in my throat that that she wouldn't wouldn't get to see it um and it was mixed it was mixed feeling about that but obviously in the end a, a happy thing but it was it was um it reminded me that she was gone well um uh, ben thank you so much for joining us uh we wish you all the best uh over the upcoming the rest of the award season and to all of our viewers please like this video, smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to go to Gold Derby and use our app to make your predictions for this year's Oscars. Thanks so much again, Ben. Thank you.